Dear Tepetida, Dear fallen Tepetida, What kind of a man would I be if I left you behind in my distant memories? Your atrocities cascaded into heartfelt emotions. I've held on to them for a lifetime of devotions. Memories held captive in the prisons of mine only entices those dark emotions to intertwine. Let loose your untold stories into the wilderness of open dialogues where it may roam in freeness. Your memories shine in my mind like rays of light peeking through the grey clouds after a thunderstorm. In those glimmering moments, I see a half-disfigured face that haunts my recollections and taunts my conscience to ask of me what kind of a man am I. If I were to leave your atrocious stories buried in the graveyards of my memories, in a shallow grave without a tombstone. For your story is about privileged men who are in the position of power with the potential for the greater good but chose to do the greater wrong because they live inside a delusional bubble whereby they think they are solely entitled to this land, to this world, to this life. This land, this planet is neither yours or mine's. We will all get a piece of this land when we die, as all our bodies decompose into the soil together. Seek togetherness in the now, else in the ever after. For as long as we have those who remember, memories can lead us to a world that is kinder. All depends on how we use it, to amend the wrong. All depends on if we abuse it to create more harm. Like a broken record, missing its grooves and kinks, the memories repeat, for she is always waiting there at the foothills of a very long and narrow driveway, hidden deep beneath an evergreen tapestry. As I parked my 1990 turquoise Chevy Beretta GT on the slope of the driveway, I opened my door and at the corner of my eyes, I caught sight of a tape tida whom I've held captive in my memories for so long. I proceeded to get out of my car. It felt as if I'm floating towards her. I found myself gravitating towards her angelic beauty, like the moon falling into the earth, creating ripples and waves along the shores. The glistening of your gentle eyes as you hid the cries behind your smiles. Your divine beauty befell my heart like a full moon falling forever into dark. She that is without a name stood shyly in front of me in a posture I was all too familiar with, a posture that conceals part of her face. Like a curious child, I rotate my face across her face, like the earth rotating around the sun. As our eyes align in a total eclipse, my shadow casts itself upon her face. In that moment, my heart took ill as the scars on the left side of her face jumped out from the shadows to grab hold of my heart. It became obvious to me now why she stood in such a posture, since half of her face and parts of her neck were scarred by a really bad burn. I paused and cursed in silence as her scars clung unto me like hot tar. What other scars lay hidden beneath her attires? Hold fast to simple things that others so desire. The deepest wounds lies within her heart, like a raging fire that burns without a spark. I needed to know. I must know what happened. I could have walked away like everybody else and let her be, but that would not be me. So I took a long deep breath, followed by a silent spell, while conversing within the prisons of my mind. Do not be ashamed of your scars, my Tepida. What scars or pains could you hide that I've not endured before? She didn't know that when I was a kid, 90% of my face was scarred up as well. As I slowly broke free from the spell of silence, I gently asked of her, without disrupting her heart, What happened with your face? It was like throwing a rock into a lake and hoping it would not cause a wake. My question was that rock, the ripples have never stopped. 
The remnants of the secret wars come washing upon these shores. Legacies of wars are the refugees. We are the spoils of wars and trophies. With a glassy eye, she described how she and her little brother were playing outside their home one afternoon when a van pulled up to them. Some men jumped out and grabbed them, then threw them into the van. When they were inside the moving van, the men poured gasoline on them. When the van came to a stop, these men lit them on fire as they kicked them out along the curbside. I use the word men very loosely here. I could compare them to animals, but animals don't even have the capacity to act in such despicable mannerism. Oh, the adjectives I could use to describe these cowards would send Facebook rushing to their defense. Your comment goes against our Facebook community standards. Your account will now be placed in a 30-day ban. For these cowards live amongst good men as they march to the rhythms of lunatics and fanatics. One by one, the army of supremacists marches to that dreadful tune of burning torches. Their saints go marching without their hoods, knowingly letting their hatred be understood. Treading up the hills where the Indians fell, side by side, cloaked in night, their hearts took ill, chirped like nightingales, breeding hatred everywhere. NRA creating lures, selling weapons here and there. The price of stocks went up a notch, while our human morals took a flop. Coldness of humanity is here, you see, fulfilling their apocalyptic prophecies. The audacity of these cowards to use children of Lao refugees as scapegoats for vengeance. Scapegoats of what exactly? To be a scapegoat of a war led by your corrupt politicians, built on corrupt policies, instilled by corrupt U.S. governments that dropped 80 million unexplosed ordnance on them? Why? For a secret war in Laos that till this very day the great majority of the U.S. citizens know nothing about. The secret war was a U.S.-led bombardment campaign in Laos that lasted for over nine years where the U.S. government lacked the transparency to tell its citizens what they were actually doing, where the U.S. government lacked the competency to complete their mission that ran underneath the smoke screens of the Vietnam War, which accomplished nothing other than making the bomb manufacturers filthy rich. Governments that lacks transparency and conducts itself in total secrecy no longer a government for its people, led by lobbyists, terrorists, worshipped by sheepos. The children of these Lao refugees, of my people, are not your Viet Congs, to be used as the scapegoats of your unjust wars, whereby your soldiers died for absolutely nothing other than for the profits and pleasures of the rich, of the corrupt. These children are not the benefactors of your wars, nor are they the manufacturers of your wars. They are simply the products of your never-ending wars. Even if these children are the children of the Viet Congs, they must never be your prayer of vengeance. If you want to find vengeance, look in the mirror first, for you are the first offenders, but you will never be the avengers. If we do not remind ourselves of human histories, we are certainly due to repeat forgotten miseries. Let this serve as a reminder of what war really is. Lao still digging up the millions of UXO US leftists. I write of this atrocity not to uplift fists, but simply to uplift all our hearts. May we bestow to each other a sense of humanity with the same desires to live and die with dignity. To let her know her atrocity was never forgotten, through memories does one honored the fallen. May this find its way to our fallen Tepti May forgiveness 
find its way back to us, my dear Quan Ma. Sincerely, your fellow Lao refugee, Chan Sisenton.